Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check it out Battle for Souls, a game by Robert Burke from Robert Burke Games. This is for one to four players, ages 14 plus. It'll take about 30 to 60 minutes to play. And in Battle for Souls, you will take control of either heaven or hell and try to lure people to your side by either corrupting them to be good or corrupting them to be bad. It is a it is a pretty simple card game in which you are going to be making poker style hands to try and lure people to your side but along the way there's going to be interesting special abilities and interesting choices you will be making in the game does all that add up to a good game though let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of battle for souls so first and foremost we're gonna handy dandy rule booklet 11 pages double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples you'd expect it to be well done because this is the deluxe version of the game which means there was a another version of the game that was released uh and it is it's very well done except for two big things first the text is really stinking tiny which did not bug me but i had someone who was looking at the rules and they're like oh i can't even read this without my glasses the big thing that does bother me about this rules is the fact I could not find it anywhere. It does not tell you how many cards you're actually supposed to start with. It says draw a starting hand, but it doesn't clearly specify what a starting hand is. I assumed it was five, and it turns out it was five, but that, that has to be clearly labeled in the rules. So um, that's kind of a big misstep there. But other than that, it's a very well done rule booklet. It should have you up and running pretty smoothly. And the game itself looks a lot more complex than it actually is, as you'll see as we go through the game. So. In Battle for Souls, one person is going to be taking control of heaven, one person is going to be taking control of hell, and you're going to try to get the souls down here into your area, either heaven or hell, because they will give you victory points, and this is the victory point symbol up here. You can also gain victory points by purchasing some of these cards down here, which some of them will have victory points like so. Uh, the Archangel ones will always have victory points, and they will help you throughout the game in various other different ways, but I'll talk more about those a little bit later. Now, normally I go over all the components and then I get into all the gameplay, but this is the deluxe version and there is a lot of components. There are four built-in expansions in the deluxe version of the game, so I'm not going to get into the components. I'll talk more about the expansions in the pros and cons, but what you need to know is the deluxe version of the game is freaking nice. Those are metal. The bags are super nice. Uh, player, oh yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. The player, player mat's super nice and it also has all the stuff you need on it right here as well. But let's go over the components that are right in front of me. So first, the most important thing you're going to have are these Virtue cards right here. The Virtue cards are pretty plain Jane. They're going to have the different colors uh, that you will need to lure these people to your side, either heaven or hell. So this one is Chastity, it's pink, and this one's going to work on this lady over here, whereas this one is Charity, it's yellow, it will work on this guy right here. The only really important cards you're going to have in here are called Reap cards, uh, wild cards, obviously, you can figure out what those do. Uh, where is a reap card? Ah, reap cards, which once again, very tiny text, but this one is going to allow you to reap the souls that you have started to kind of uh, uh, come to your side of the card, and that will make more sense when we get to that phase in the turn order, so I'm not going to go too much into that, but now you know what kind of cards you're going to get here. So when you first start the game, you're going to draw your starting hand size, and then you're going to look at your handy dandy player reference cards, and oh my goodness, I love these player reference cards. So first, this one you're actually going to use until you're playing with the expansions, but this has how all four of the different expansions work, which by the way, I freaking love this. When you're playing with a micro expansion, you don't want to have to dig through the rule booklet to find how to play it, so I really like the fact that they included this in with the game. There's four of these in with the game, because you can play up to four players even though I would never really recommend it. I tried it once, and I was like, no, this is this is a two-player game. But still, very nice. Uh, next, though, the one that you primarily be using, especially when you first start the game, is this card right here. And this is going to have the turn order, which obviously is very important. Uh, you're going to be going through eight phases in your turn and uh, you have to do phases three and phases eight and phases phase eight is actually just saying hey my, my turn's over buddy uh, but on the back it has the hand rewards because how you're going to be luring these souls to you is by playing somewhat of poker hands like two pair full house three of a kind four of a kind five of a kind and that will make more sense once we get into the game so let's just start it off we'll do it with the turn order so we have our five cards. We're ready to rock and roll. We're playing the heaven side. Uh, there is a hell side as well. It's set up over here. You can't see it as much. They're nearly identical, especially with these big decks. But once you start getting into these cards, it does produce a little bit more asymmetrical aspect of the game. And I'll talk more about it in the pros and cons. 
So, first thing we do, turn order, use one revealed Archangel or Devil card that you have in play on one soul in play. So, your Archangel card are these cards right here, and these cards are awesome because they'll give you victory points at the end of the game, and they will also give you per persistent powers throughout the game. So, Gabriel is going to allow me to add plus one to chase soul per turn, and it just so happens, luckily enough, because I set it up, uh, there is a chase soul out here, which means now I can bloop, knock this over to my side, plus one. So now the, the shepherdess is kind of leaning towards going to heaven instead of going to hell. Now you can only use this once, so even if there was another pink card out there for me to lure, I could only do it once. Uh, but still, having these cards is great because at the beginning of each turn, if that color is out, you get to move it up one. So next... What you're going to do is you're going to purchase cards by subtracting holy or unholy points from souls in play to pay the cost of the cards. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about these distinctive D6 dice, which I have not mentioned, which, by the way, they're really stinking nice. As you corrupt, or I guess heaven would corrupt them too, as you corrupt these souls, the numbers are going to go up. Now, what do, what do these arrows and skulls mean? If the skull is on four, five, or six, that means these souls are ready to be reaped. You have gotten them ready to go to heaven or ready to go to hell and they are uh, if you reap them they will come to you whereas if they're on one two or three they're not quite ready to go to heaven or hell just yet they got some more time on earth uh even though they still die they just kind of go to the void but whatever how this works is though as you increase these numbers you'll be able to spend these so if this was on a five i could now spend on my turn three two or one to get one of these cards down here. And these cards, these cards are very, very powerful. Uh, some of them will be cards that you can play on your turn. So for instance, this is an instant one. Once per game, remove up to two souls from play that have no holy or unholy points. Discard the souls chosen to purgatory and draw the same number of new souls to replace them. Uh, so that could be a very powerful card, especially if you think that your other team, oh wow, those are weirdly shuffled. Um, Next, we got these ones right here. So these ones with victory points means you have to play them on your turn, but they're going to add either plus two or minus two to various different aspects. And that is pretty rare in this game. Most of the time, you're just going to be focusing on bringing people over to your side, not so much of messing with other people. But some of these cards will allow you to do that. So you can, during phase two, you'll be able to purchase cards from down here by bumping these numbers uh, down that you have the souls that you've tried to reap. So the next thing you're going to do is go to phase three. And this is one of the things you absolutely have to do on your hand. You have to play a set of virtue temptation hand cards. So what does that mean? That's where the poker aspect of the game comes into play because you're going to be able to play one of these poker cards on your hand. Now let's just get into what if you can't. If you can't, you can discard any number of cards in your hand, which generally you want to do uh, if you have too many cards, or you can draw one new card to your hand and there is a hand limit of eight. But most of the time what you're going to want to do is play down hand so you can get the rewards. And the rewards are all clearly listed down here. So let's see what I have in my hand. It's not a particularly great hand. I have two green cards, which actually works out really well because green cards are what I need to convince the artist to come to heaven. Hey buddy, come to heaven. We got smoothies. So what I'm going to do on my turn is since I have a pair, I'm going to play one pair. So I take a victory point card. The victory point card earned must be played in the player's discard pile. So this one doesn't actually lure him over here, but it does give me a delicious victory point, which is great. So put it over here into my victory point pile and I discard these cards. Now, what I could do though is instead, and it's probably the better idea, is to just draw a card and work my way up to having two pair or a full house because as you see, uh, as you progress down the list, you get better and better stuff. So let's say I had a third green card. Then I would add one holy point. And it says HP or UP, that's unholy points or holy points. You just add a point to the soul. So if that were to be the case, boom, I'd knock it down and I would be one step closer to corrupting that person right there. So that's what you're going to do during this phase. You are going to be moving those up or you're going to be scoring stuff or you're going to be uh, discarding a card in very rare instances or drawing up to a card. So next you get to stay step four. Use one intercession or sin card ability and that is uh, these cards down here, intercession and sin. And you only get to do that if you've purchased one of those cards uh, most of the time. 
So you use those cards. Step five, use one holy or unholy relic. Once again, that is the slightly more expensive cards over here. So you're just going to use those steps. And the rules with this are you can only play one of these cards per turn. So you can only play one intercession card and you can only play one holy relic on your turn. You can't be like, ah, four holy relic cards because that, that'd be super OP. Uh, if you did that. Next, you move down to the phase six, which is the play the reap card. So let's get to that reap card I talked about. Now, playing a reap card is very important because that's how you're going to get souls to your side of the board. So let's go ahead, just read you the card. When reap is played, all souls in play, so all these souls, even if they're not in heaven or in hell, if they haven't chosen their allegiance, are going to be uh, resolved. So you may only play a reap card if one or more of the following is true. One soul has four or more unholy points, which as I mentioned, will mean they have a skull on them. Or all souls in place have a holy point or an unholy point. So for instance, if all three of them were down here, this would be a fantastic time to play a reap card because I would get three, six, nine points. But if it were like this, I could not play a reap card yet. But when you play a reap card, all the souls are going to be dealt with. Uh, and some various different things could happen. So let's just say that we had this happening right here. This would mean that I would get this card. So I would score the three victory points and these two cards would go into what's called the void and they're gone, they'll be ghosts. And then we get three new cards. Boop. Boop. So we put them back out here, and oh, we got one of the expansions, George Washington. And then, finally, we get to phase number seven, where you're going to draw back up until you have five virtue slash temptation cards in your hand for the next turn. Which is the only point in the game where they mention that the hand size is five, but still needs to be in that rule booklet. Uh, last but not least, you end your turn by saying, hey buddy, I'm done with my turn, and that is an essential thing that you have to do. Uh, but you're going to continue to do this until you have reaped all the souls or all the souls are gone, at which point you will tally up your score. You'll get scores from these cards right here, from the Archangel cards slash uh, Devil cards, from scoring some of these cards down here. Whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. And interestingly enough, uh, if there's a tie, there's no tiebreaker in this game. It's just, hey, it's a tie. You guys both suck. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to do inside of Battle for Souls. Alright then, Battle for Souls. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros, let's go to the cons. First, before I get started, I want to mention that I am reviewing the deluxe version of the game. And I will mention the differences between the deluxe and the, the basic version of the game briefly to the pros and cons. But starting on the con size, it says one to four players. You can't play it three players. I mean, you could, but he even says in there, don't play it three players. And I personally would not recommend it as a four player game. This is a two player game and a solo game if you like playing games where it's just maximize your score, which personally is my least favorite type of solo game. I'd rather play against some sort of AI, but if you like maximize your score games, I can recommend this as a solo game. So a one and two player game primarily for this game, which is a restricted player count. Another comment that I have in this game is obviously the theme is going to be a turn off to some people. Now, I thought the theme was going to be a turn off to me because it's Jesus-y and religious -y and oh, there's heaven, there's hell, blah, blah, blah. Um, but surprisingly, the theme came across really well, and I really got into the theme, which I was not expecting. And if you roleplay the game a little bit and actually pretend like you're dragging people to hell by feeding them donuts or, or sex or something like that, it actually added to the game. Um, but, but I'll talk more about that in the pros. Continuing on the con side, the font, uh, the text is really small, which doesn't bug me so much because my eyesight with glasses is pretty decent. But I did have one or two people who were like, man, that, that, the text is just too stinking small, especially on the player reference cards and some of these cards, the reap cards and the rule booklet. So I wish the text was a little bit bigger. Also, going back to the rule booklet, it doesn't specifically tell you how large the starting hand size is. At least I could not find it in two or three readings of the rule booklet. Now you will kind of figure it out in the turn order card, but it should be in the rule booklet, obviously not in the turn order card. So that seemed like a pretty big oversight there. Another comment out of the game, and this is a very minor con, so this is a nitpick, take it for what you will, is that sometimes you will get a better intercession card than someone else gets a sin card, and that can make the game swing just a little bit more than I might like it to. Especially, you can get a really great Holy Relic card, whereas someone else might get... Uh, you know, the Unholy Relic card, which isn't nearly as useful to them at that current moment. And that can swing the game just a little bit more than I would like it to. But still, that is a nitpick. I want you to realize that that is a nitpick. Uh, continuing on the cons, uh, I don't know if this is really a con, but I do recommend getting the deluxe version of the game, not the basic version of the game. And not for the nice components, because the components are great. The player mat's great, the metal components, the dice, all that's great. But the real reason is for the four 
micro expansions that are included in the game. I'll talk more about those in the pros, but I highly recommend getting the deluxe version of the game just so you can get those four expansions. Because I think most people are going to like this game. Spoiler alert, and those really give the game some legs, uh, which, which the game already had. Any of the cons that I have with the game? Uh, no, not really anything to think of. Moving on to the pros, I was very pleasantly surprised with Battle for Souls. If you watch my channel, you know I'm not a particularly religious person. So the theme instantly turned me off. Oh, this is the last kind I have of the game, is that the artwork, at first glance, the artwork, you're either going to like it, or you're going to be like, oh my god, did they just get that crap off Google search? But moving on to the pros, surprisingly, the artwork helped with the theme of the game for me because you know this is like the the pre not the prehistoric era the, the old school era where people actually were much more likely to believe that there was a heaven and there was a hell and you could be corrupted and go to either one of those and so this style of artwork actually fit the game really well and in my opinion served the theme of the game and helped the theme come across uh so the theme of the game was surprisingly a big plus for me despite the fact i'm not a religiously person so but but that being said if you are a religious person and you actually do believe there's a heaven and hell then this might be not uh, a topic that you want uh but if you're not if you can deal with that content the theme comes across very well the gameplay is very snappy it looks like it's really complex and really heavy and it's not this is the kind of game that once you know what you're doing you can knock out a game to 20 to 40 minutes yeah, it is a quick, snappy game, which I really liked. I like the tug-of-war aspect of the game. I like the intercession card and the holy relic cards and the sin and unholy relic cards on the flip side. I really like the variety of cards and the different stuff they did. Uh, there, there's, there's just a lot to like in this game. The components, obviously, especially in the deluxe version, are very nice. The cards are thick and sturdy. The four expansions, that's where it's at. So I want to put it like this. Just with the base game... I really enjoyed this game and I would still recommend this game but with those four expansions it just takes the game to another level uh, and, and my two favorite one without a doubt were the special powers which gives you special powers and then the bonus ones which gives you like secret objectives that you're trying to reach I really like both of those but I liked all four of the different expansions my least favorite would probably be the influence tokens but I still liked it so that says a lot about it and you can kind of mix and match and put those in there and I do really recommend those even though you can't play with them in the solo version of the game which is a little bit of a bummer if you're looking at this as a solo game um so if you actually if you're looking at this as a solo game I might actually recommend the basic version of the game not the deluxe version of the game so that is something of note as well uh I like the gameplay I like the theme surprisingly I like the artwork surprisingly even though I don't really like the artwork that much I like how it added to the theme uh easy to learn easy to teach once you realize of course that it's a five hand size and especially if people are familiar with poker it's even going to be easier to be like oh two pair three of a kind four of a kind five of a kind one pair uh i liked the do i get the instant reward now or do i keep drawing cards in the hopes of getting better stuff i like that aspect of the game and i like the fact that your opponent can't screw with you too much and if they do want to screw with you they are going to have to spend their valuable points i like the fact that it's not just like a straight up take that game where it's like there's it's just take that take that take that take that you could, you're gonna take that you're gonna attack people from time to time but you are going to have to spend your valuable points in order to attack people so i did like that aspect of the game it's more I don't want to say it's a solitaire game, but it is more of a two-player solitaire game than it is a take-that game. So don't think it's a solitaire game, but it is more of a game where you're going to be doing your thing, and they're going to be doing your thing, and you're going to be playing this little tug-of-war, and I like that aspect of the game. So in the end, Battle for Souls, easy recommendation. Uh, I like it as a two-player game. It is going to be a two-player game that I keep. Uh, I like the theme, surprisingly. I like the artwork, surprisingly, even though I don't like the theme and I don't like the artwork. He made it work somehow. Expansions are fantastic. And in the end, Battle for Souls, definitely one you're going to want to check out if you're in the market for a two-player game that uh, that is definitely not on the heavy side, but it's not on the light side either. It's got a surprising amount of bite to it. That is Battle for Souls. The deluxe edition is what I review. If you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what's your favorite Jesus-y, religious-y themed game. And wow, that is a really difficult question for me. Because as I look around, I see no other religious-themed games. Uh, I'm sure there's some dry Euro game where you're actually doing religious stuff on there uh, that I didn't even realize was a religious -y themed game. But for me personally, I don't think I have. You know, I have a very, very big collection of games. I don't know if I have another religious-themed game.
So this might be the first. Um, oh, Battle Sheep. Battle Sheep. I think that's about religion. It's not. Yeah, I think this is the only religious theme game I have in my collection. So hats off! Battle for Souls. My favorite religious theme game, as far as I can tell right now. But what is your favorite religion themed game? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.